I'm here at the beach at Cap Cos to talk about um, longshore features uh, and longshore behaviour as sand uh, on sand grade beaches. Um, beach cusps can occur where uh, edge waves and incident waves intersect and so that you get higher volume water coming on the, on the beach at a particular point um, and, and that water uh, drains back off the beach uh, laterally uh, creating uh, cusp basins um, and then depositing sediment as horns. So that's one feature which has already been explained uh, that you find along shore um, beaches. But one of the main uh, problems with sand grade beaches is that you have um, a tendency to have longshore drift. That's the movement of sand and sediment laterally along a shoreline. It's also called littoral drift. And that movement can actually remove sand from one area and deposit it at another. Where it gets deposited is often known as a sediment sink. And that can occur in estuaries, um, as, as, we've, as we have seen, um, but also in other types of traps. One of the uh, sediment trap types is what we call a re-entrant trap. That's where you have a bay where the sand enters, perhaps through wave current action bringing sediment in, and then the sediment then stays in the bay and re-enters this trap that keeps circulating around. That's, that's the sediment cell. So that's one type of trap. But if the sand can escape that sort of trap and carry on along a coastline, it may eventually come across um, an old river valley that is underneath this, now underneath the sea as a submarine canyon. And if sand being taken along, taken along as bed load along the coastline encounters one of these submarine canyons, it can actually go down it and be lost from the coastal system. And that's the type of sink we call a deep sink, where the sand is taken offshore and it won't be recycled into the coastal system until, until sea levels fall again. And, and then we have a sea level rise which reworks that material back to the coastline. If the sediment carries on along the coastline, however, um, and the coastline suddenly veers, uh, changes direction, now the sediment and the longshore drift can't respond to that very quickly. So the longshore drift actually carries out into the sea and with it, it takes the sediment. Now if that is strong enough and there's enough sediment, then a sediment buildup can occur where the coast changes course so that you can have a, um, an elongation of the beach out into the sea. And that's what we call a, a salient trap, something that sticks out, a salient uh, trap. And of course a good example of that is a spit, or if there is two um, uh, headlands that are being connected up by that, then we might call it a tombolo or a barrier. So there's lots of different types of salient traps, but they occur where the, where the coastline changes course. And in fact, where we are today on the beach at Cap Cos, we are in fact on the tip of a spit, and the sediment is coming along the coastline. Um, coming along the coastline from that direction towards the camera and then we follow it round move this way the sediment ends up coming to this far tip and this is the end of the Cap Cos spit they've in this particular location they have put a seawall there uh, as a breakwater to um, to catch the, the very uh, last of the sediment to make sure that they keep it on the beach. They don't really want it, the sediment to be lost out into the, out into the sea. After all, this is quite a popular tourist beach. Now, if uh, sediment being carried along by longshore drift meets another longshore drift system, so we've got two longshore drift systems which converge. Now, at the point where they converge, then sediment is not gonna be able to travel uh, uh, to continue traveling in either direction. It's going to stop. They're going to sort of crash on head to head. And at that point, sediment can drop out of transport and you can have a buildup of sediment. And that's what we call a, um, an equilibrium trap because you have equal force from either side. It's called an equilibrium trap. The sediment is deposited. And that can result in landforms such as uh, what we call cuspate forelands. And cuspate forelands aren't that common, but where you do find them, they can grow into quite uh, big sizes that look a bit like deltas. A good example in southern Britain is the, um, the Dungeness area, Romney Marsh, 
in the Kent Sussex uh, border. Um, so there are four main types of sediment traps uh, that you find as a result of longshore drift. The sediment, the sand can be moved along and it can end up in one of these sinks. And that's quite important for, uh, in terms of coastal management because if you do have a, um, a tourist beach where you want to retain the sediment or if you have a beach that is perhaps vulnerable to sa sand loss which then makes um, breaching of a barrier possible which may flood houses behind and so on you really want to do everything you can to keep the sand on the beach. And one popular method used by coastal managers to re retain sand on the beach is to construct groins, perhaps wooden, perhaps concrete, um, at right angles to the beach, on the beach, so that sediment that is moved along by longshore drift gets stuck in the pockets in between the groins. And the way that longshore drift works is that uh, sediment is uh, uh, moved onto the beach with the swash of the waves. Now the swash don't have to go um, parallel to the beach, they can go obliquely. So if they swash onto the beach obliquely, they take the sediment with the force of the swash up the beach, but then gravity of the backwash takes it vertically down the beach. So the sediment zigzags along with the swash and then the backwash, um, the, the energy of the swash, the energy of gravity bringing it back down again, zigzagging along. But if you put a groin in the way, then obviously the, the sediment can't continue on its way. Now that has a number of problems. Um, because if you put too many groins in that trap too much sand, then down drift areas that may rely on that sand for replenishment may become starved. And so those areas may end up being uh, impoverished in terms of sediment, which may lead to the loss of beach sand, the thinning of barriers, uh, the um, degradation of dune systems, which then might lead to coastal flooding and so on. So coastal managers need to be mindful of the knock-on effects of putting these uh, management practices in place that uh, are designed to tackle the problems associated with longshore drift.